Hi folks, this is Rafa Sabag and today we'll explain how push systems work and why they are better than traditional push systems. This is the representation of a workflow. The work item enters the input stage, then it moves to analysis, then to creation and then to revision. When they are done revising it, it's moved to archive. The stages in green are actual work stages, so someone is working on the item when the item is on those stages. The other stages are wait stages, which mean they are queued. Items are waiting there for someone to pick them up and start working on them. I'll start by explaining the main problems with the traditional push system. Let's say whoever is working in the analysis stage is done with analyzing the item. They will push it to the creation stage and it will be placed on the queue of that stage. Now, analysis can pick another item from input, their backlog. Let's say analysis is much faster than creation. Therefore, they keep picking items from input, getting them done from the analysis, and then pushing them towards creation. Items start to accumulate there. At this point, we can see two different problems. One is that creation in this workflow is clearly a bottleneck. Things are not moving out of there, or at least not fast enough. And the other problem is that revision is under starvation. As items are not moving fast enough out of creation, at some point, revision has nothing to work with. In a bigger system, in a complex organization, imagine that happening in several different places. Now, let's see how a pool system would better work for our workflow. I will first introduce a concept called WIP limits. WIP stands for Work in Progress or Work in Process, WIP limits, the maximum number of items that can be under a stage or a set of stages. In our workflow, you can see that a maximum of two items can be under analysis. The maximum of four items can be under creation, either on their queue or on the working stage. And just the same, a maximum of two items can be under revision. And you can see that at this moment, they are all on their limits. Analysis has two items, creation has four items, revision has two items. So at this particular moment, if an item under analysis is done, it cannot be moved to creation. It is not allowed as it would exceed its limit. But then, what should people doing analysis do? Well, maybe do something else. Improvements, research, study, or help other people on that workflow. But now, let's say an item under revision is done it will be moved to the stage archive. There are no limits there. And revision will pick the next item on their queue to work on. But see, this opens a room on the revision stages. They have one item there, but their whip limit is two. If there is at least one item done on the creation stages, they will pull an item from there. Let's say there is one, they will pull it. And now this has opened a room on the creation stages. Their whip limit is four, but they have only three items there. If there is an item done on the analysis stage, creation will now pull an item from there, which will open room at that stage. And now analysis can pick a new item from input. You can see how the movement on the revision stages has created movement on the entire workflow. It made items flow. With that, we can calibrate the whip limits to avoid bottlenecks and starvation. And by doing this, we can achieve a continuous flow of value. This is one of the core principles of the Kanban method and of the Toyota production system. That's it folks, thank you and see you on the next video.